O O O in search of the truth, the the ultimate truth, the real truth, the nothing but but the truth. What is the truth? Sometimes you got to fly into the uncomfortable zone of truth telling. Right? Where is the truth? Oh, truth, come out, come out, wherever you are. I want to know you. I want to know you better, truth. Reveal yourself to me, truth. So Tulsi Gabbard, this is critical, critical uh, thinking right here. Critical thinking on based on what the good congresswoman from Hawaii, Eloha, said in the debate, and also the uh, ongoing controversy of anti-BDS legislation. Two two strikes in this reporter's view. I was just, I try to stay apolitical, meaning that I let the evidence. Let the evidence lead me to the uh, to the kill. Let the evidence lead me to the truth. That's what it's all about. That's what truth telling is. So, so unfortunately, 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 you remember back in you remember the days of 2000, 2003. Let me bring us back to March nineteenth, two thousand three, when. This young man right here, the one George W. Bush, President of the United States, said that there are weapons of mass destruction. Remember how we all knew it was bullshit? A lot of us did. A lot of us knew it was a lie. Nobody trusted George W. Bush. They saw him as an oil man in the White House. Uh, They knew that the Saddam Hussein had been involved in in CIA operations to to secure that oil for the... the, uh, for, for OPEC and for the United States and the, uh, or the British oil companies that were doing business in the Persian Gulf. And when he said ma- weapons of mass destruction, we said, what? We said, what? No way. Way. Uh, so that's what some people said. They said, we said, no way. They said, way. So let's revisit George W. Bush and we'll talk about uh, Tulsi Gabbard and um, again two strikes, two strikes the BDS and uh, and the the comment her comment in her own words that I'm going to play for you uh, on weapons of mass destruction. So let's look at the, the let's listen to the good George W. Bush. Our nation enters this conflict reluctantly, yet our purpose is sure. The people of the United States and our friends and allies will not live at the mercy of an outlaw regime that threatens the peace with weapons of mass murder. We will meet that threat now with our Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines so that we do not have to meet it later with armies of firefighters and police and doctors on the streets of our cities. Now that conflict has come, the only way to limit its duration is to apply decisive force. And I assure you, this will not be a campaign of half measures, and we will accept no outcome but victory. My fellow citizens. Remember when he said that? Right? Did we believe him? That is the good George W. Bush, the president of the United States, bringing us to war, bringing us in Iraq at the time, trying to, to somehow sow the seeds of war, the so a connection between that and 9-11. Now, Bush kind of did that. Bush, no, everybody knew millions and millions of people stood up and fought back and protested and paraded around the streets of the United States in opposition to Bush's decision to go to war in Iraq based on speculation that there was weapons of mass destruction and proof was never shown to the American people. No proof just a just a hunch, a George W. Bush hunch that there may be weapons of mass destruction. But he told the he told he told the world, he told Congress, he told the Senate, and he told the American people that 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 Iraq under the regime of Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and that Saddam Hussein had forty eight hours to vacate the country. A regime change to get the guy who poisoned his people and such, right? And when we heard that, a lot of us said, no way, man, not happening, right? It's just, it's a lie. It's bullshit, right? So, so, um, 
so Tulsi Gabbard said the opposite. So let's listen. That was then. Uh, that was 2003. That was about 16 years ago, 17 years ago. Let's look at, let's look at what happened the other night. Is the, is the idea that it was Bush right in that there was weapons of mass destruction? No, Bush was absolutely wrong. It was proven. He even said it in his own words. He's got it, he got it wrong. And, you know, and a million Iraqis die, and, and thousands of American troops die, and thousands of uh, allied troops die suffer, get, get, you know, their limbs blown up, right? Innocent people, you start a war in a foreign country for no reason, and those people never forget you. That's still, that's still ongoing. That, that damage is forever. That damage, the full extent of that damage and the, the resentment of the people that you blew up, their mothers, their children, their grandparents, their grandmothers, their, their fathers, that you blew up with your, with your insane idea of weapons of mass destruction, that hasn't been fully realized yet. That, that resentment of the people of the place that you invaded illegally and blew up. So, so here's, here's, uh, here's the controversy. This is two nights ago on the uh, stage in, in Detroit, Michigan. Well, I, I think that these are matters of great and often difficult judgment. And there is no sort of primer for presidents to read. We have to determine whether a potential president has adequate judgment in these decisions. Uh, I was only one of two members on this panel today who were called to make a judgment about the Iraq war. I was a relatively new member of Congress. And I made the right judgment because it was obvious to me that George Bush was fanning the flames of war. Now wow. we face similar situations. Okay, so that's that's the the uh, good senator, the good governor from Washington, who was a congressman at the time, and he voted he didn't believe what George W. Bush was selling to Congress and selling to the American people that there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. I, He's not the only one who got it right. Bernie Sanders got it right. Uh, Joe Biden got it wrong. A lot, a lot, of, a lot, a lot of people in Congress and the Senate got it wrong. They authorized or went along with the surge and all these these uh, crazy ideas of how they were going to weed out the uh, the regime in Iraq and 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 find weapons of mass destruction and. And all this stuff. So a lot of us, you didn't have to be a congressperson at the time to, to know that that Bush was lying. Right. What, what, did, what did it take? Okay, so if you're not a congress, there's only a couple of hundred congresspeople and a couple of hundred senators and one president, right? But what about the mass millions of people that saw it for what it was and stood up against the war in Iraq, right? That was the right judgment. That was the right, as, as uh, Inslee says, Governor Inslee says, it was a, a matter of judgment. And his judgment was correct. My judgment was correct. Anybody that I knew at the time, anybody and everybody that I knew at the time, whether I was in the street, you know, with a, with a picket sign, and I remember it, I was, I was out in the street in New York City uh, going against rallying against the war in Iraq. I was there. Right? And millions of other people got it right. Millions of other people got it right that, it, that there was no evidence of weapons of mass destruction. Where we recognize we have a president who would be willing to beat the drums of war. We need a president who can stand up against the drums of war and make rational decisions. That was the Thank right you. vote, and I believe Thank it. you, Governor. Uh, Vice President Biden, he was obviously suggesting that you made the wrong decision and had bad judgment when you voted to go to war in Iraq as a U.S. senator. I did make a bad judgment. Trust me. All right, so a bad, a bad judgment. He made a bad judgment. Let's listen. Joe Biden made... A bad judgment. Because it was obvious to me that George Bush was fanning the flames of war. Now we face similar situations where we recognize we have a president who'd be willing to beat the drums of war. 
We need a president who can stand up against the drums of war and make rational and agree to put inspectors in from rational decisions. Sorry, that was the right you. vote, and I believe Thank it. you, Governor. Uh, Vice President Biden, he was obviously suggesting that you made the wrong decision and had bad judgment when you voted to go to war in Iraq as a U.S. Senator. I did make a bad judgment trusting the president saying he was only doing this to get inspectors in and get the U.N. to agree to put inspectors in. From the moment shock and all started. So he knows that, so he's making, he, he's admitting that he used bad judgment. Joe Biden, to Joe Biden's credit, Joe Biden has bad judgment, and he admitted that he has bad judgment. In that instance, there's tons of other instances, and, I, you know, that's not the topic of this video. You watch other videos where he's made, you know, bad decisions on busing and, and you know, uh, to crime bills that he, he was, seems to have been an author of every single, uh, you know, crazy ass crime bill, uh, his whole, his whole career in Congress. But here he admits that his judgment was off and that he gave Bush the benefit of the doubt for whatever reason, for whatever reason, it doesn't matter. He, he used bad judgment and he went, went along with George W. Bush to, invade Iraq for whatever reason. From that moment, I was opposed to the effort and I was outspoken as much as anyone at all in the Congress and administration. Secondly, I was asked by the president in the first meeting we had on Iraq, he turned and said, Joe, get our combat troops out in front of the entire national security team. And one of the proudest moments of my life was to stand there in Afwa Palace and- Now he's talking about, he's George, now he's saying that Eight years later, as the vice president, eight years or seven years or six years with Obama, they're sitting in the White House now, and 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 now Joe Biden is going to say, yeah, Obama turns to him and says, Joe, get our troops out, right? As if he's a, now he's the heroic Joe, heroic stretch faced Joe. Uh, he's trying to cover. He's cover. He's he's throwing cover. Tell everyone that we're coming. All our combat troops are coming home. I opposed Thank the you. surge in Afghanistan. This long overdue, we should have not, in fact, gone into Afghanistan. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Thank Vice you, Mr. President. President. I, I, I want to. Now he mixes two. He mixes Afghanistan and he mixes Iraq up. Just mix it all together, Joe. Bring in, I would like to bring in the, the person on the stage who served in Iraq, uh, Governor. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Congresswoman Gabbard. Your response to what Vice President Biden just said. We were all lied to. This is the betrayal. This is the betrayal to the American people, to me, to my fellow service members. We were all lied to. Told okay, so there's Tulsi Gabbard saying we were all lied to. All right? Do we agree with that assessment? Did George W. Bush lie about weapons of mass destruction? 90% chance that he did. Either he, he didn't lie and he was just so stupid to believe the oil guys and the the uh, the CIA spooks that were telling him to say it, or he was, or he really believed it. He believed it. He believed the garbage that was being put in front of him, without any evidence, without any verifiable evidence, to present to the American people that showed us that there was weapons of mass destruction, that there was a potential for a nuclear conflict, a nuclear exchange with I Iraq. And Bush never showed us any evidence of that. Therefore, <clears throat> Tulsi Gabbard is correct in saying that we were lied to. I think we agree with that, right? Let's continue. Told that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, was working with Al Qaeda, and that this posed a threat to the American people. So I enlisted after 9 11 to protect our country, to go after those who attacked us on that fateful day, who took the what? lives of. Whoa, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Let's go back. To This is the betrayal. This is the betrayal to the American people, to me, to my fellow service members. We were all lied to, told that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, was working with Al-Qaeda, and that this posed a threat to the American people. So I enlisted after 9-11 to protect our country. To so she's combining Iraq and 9-11. What does Iraq and 9-11 have anything to do with each other? What does Iraq and 9-11 have to do with each other? Oh, they're, they're both in the Middle East. They're both in, um, who, who did 9-11? Who did, uh, we don't know. That was, wasn't that Saudi Arabia? Wasn't that Saudi money 
and and they had they were they were uh, dug in in Afghanistan. What does that have to do with Iraq? It has nothing to do with Iraq. So go after those who attacked us on that fateful day, who took the lives of thousands of Americans. The, the problem is that this current president is continuing to after those who attacked to. This is the betrayal. This is the betrayal to the American people. President in the first meeting we had on Iraq. I want you to listen to the whole statement. Listen to Tulsi Gabbard's whole statement. And she says that she believed that there were weapons of mass destruction. She believed George Bush, and she enlisted in the military to go fight against the, the people that, that had these weapons of mass destruction, and somehow it was tied to 9-11, and that's her judgment. He turned and said, Joe, get our combat troops out in front of the entire national security team. And one of the proudest moments of my life was to stand there in Afwa Palace and tell everyone that we're coming, all our combat troops are coming home. I opposed Thank the you. surge in Afghanistan. This long overdue, we should have not, in fact, gone into Afghanistan. Thank you, the way Mr. Thank you Mr. President. Mr. President. I, I, I want to bring in, I would like to bring in the, the person on the stage who served in Iraq, uh, Governor, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Congresswoman Gabbard, your response to what Vice President Biden just said. We were all lied to. This is the betrayal. This is the betrayal to the American people, to me, to my fellow service members. We were all lied to, told that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, was working with Al Qaeda, and that this posed a threat to the American people. So I enlisted after 9-11 to protect our country, to go after those who attacked us on that fateful day, who took the lives of thousands of Americans. So she, she, swallowed, the, she swallowed the lie hook, line, and sinker. Uh, that's, that's what she did, right? I didn't fall for it. What about the millions of people that didn't fall for it? Why did Tulsi Gabbard fall for the lie, George W. Bush's lie, and, then, and somehow equate it to 9-11, the idea of Iraq having something to do with 9-11, weapons of mass destruction, 9-11, just sew it all together. How come she didn't have the proper judgment to see through it. Not only didn't she have the proper judgment, but she acted on it. While millions of people were out in the street protesting against the Iraq war, Tulsi Gabbard was busy trying to enlist in the war to go and fight. <clears throat> How many people did Tulsi Gabbard kill? How many people did Tulsi Gabbard and her efforts contribute to the suffering of the Iraqi people? How many? There's a million, you know, million casualties, people maimed, people mutilated, people uh, psychologically scarred forever. The, 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 the cost, the trillions of dollars in money. And Tulsi Gabbard, how much Tulsi Gabbard contributed to that? While people were out in the street boycotting against it, as in uh, Vietnam, people opposed it. The hippies opposed it. And the conservative you know, wing of America at the time uh, believed in it and people continued to die and die and die. Where was Tulsi Gabbard's voice to oppose it? Now you say, oh, she's only 20 years old, 25 years old, whatever. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Hey, man, it doesn't matter what you're, if you're 20. You're 20, you're old enough, you're making these decisions. Why, you, you didn't, I mean, again, millions of people, millions of people were able to see it. And Tulsi Gabbard was not able to see it. Right? That is, that, I, I, don't, I, I think it's just inescapably bad judgment. Now, why attack Tulsi Gabbard? Isn't she, she, well, okay, she learned from her mistake. Let's talk about that. Tulsi Gabbard, she, she was lied to, and then she, she enlists, she, her bad judgment caused her to, to go join the military and blow up people and, and fight rather than stay in her, her, her community and oppose the, the war and see through the lie and educate people, Tulsi Gabbard was on the front lines, you know, blowing people up and, 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 and involved in that. Why, why didn't she have the judgment? Why didn't she? was too young. She was too, um, you know, what, what was the reason? You know, what, what, why? <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know how else to slice it. You know what I mean? She, it's just... It equates to bad judgment. Now, 
Tulsi Gabbard gets this criticism because Tulsi Gabbard is, oh, that's what I wanted to say. She, she, did she learn from it? That's, now that's her, her gift, right? But she's not saying that she, her judgment was bad. She's saying we were lied to. That's the equivalent of Joe Biden saying that we were lied to. That's the equivalent of everybody in Congress that was involved in those decisions saying, oh, no, we were lied to. We, I didn't, it wasn't, what, what do you want me to do, not believe the president? It's the same thing. You were either lied to and went along with it because you believed it. You were lied to and you said, hey, fuck it, who cares? You know, just whatever. You know, if that's what everybody else wants to do, that's what I'm going to do. Right? That's what most people believe about Congress. They may not have believed it, but they certainly went along with it. And Tulsi Gabbard is here testifying that she believed it. She believed it so much that she was willing to put on a uniform and grab a gun and destabilize a nation over a lie that, that millions of people saw to be a lie. And that is, that's just fundamentally, fundamentally bad judgment. Now, let's go one step further. Did Tulsi Gabbard, is that just a one, a one time floozy kind of uh, bad judgment? No, BDS, right? Here's Tulsi Gabbard on BDS. Boycott, divest, and sanctions in Iraq. This vote came to a week ago. This was last week. Now we're talking about Iraq this week. Two weeks ago, this was a judgment on, a, on BDS. Some of you have sent me messages uh, and posted on social media asking for more information about why I voted the way I did on a recent resolution talking about BDS. So I wanted to uh, give you some background and talk to you about uh, my commitment to defending our First Amendment rights. Nothing is more fundamental to the identity of our country than the rights and freedoms that are enshrined in our Constitution. Now, I've fought to defend these freedoms, both as a soldier and a congresswoman, and it's why we'll continue to oppose unconstitutional legislation like S-1, a bill that does seek to... Re okay, so she's, she's making a case, right, because, because her, her constituents, the people that gave her money or whatever, are telling her, by the way, BDS is a, is a bullshit, is a good effort to boycott, divest, and sanction companies and, and any activity that supports the, the nation of Israel against the Palestinian people. Now, that is what BDS is. And she's saying that the anti-BDS legislation that she signed is also that. Now, that, that is just fundamentally false. Right? She is giving false testimony. Say, defi she's trying to defend her, her, her going along with anti-BDS legislation. Restrict freedom of speech by imposing legal penalties against those who participate in the BDS movement. All right, so she's, she's opposing the people that, uh, that, that support BDS. Now, what, is, what the hell is BDS? Right? Resolution, resolution 246, right? it's whereas Jewish state of Israel is a key ally and strategic partner of the United States. It's a, it's a support of Israel. It's a bill in our Congress to support a foreign nation at all costs, to almost give Israel... Um, the the protections of our constitution. There's no other. There's no precedence for this. There's no other country in the history of American politics that has gotten this kind of treatment other than Israel. It is highly suspect. It is highly suspicious. It pisses a lot of people off because Israel is clearly uh, oppressing the Palestinian people. Is brutalizing them. It is an apartheid state. It, it, it has a, 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 at the core, it's racist in that it, it, it's Jewish against Palestinian. It's not a democracy. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's, it, what we would consider a separation of church and state. Israel is, is one. It's a Jewish democracy, <laughs> for lack of a better term. So, so here's, here's Tulsi Gabbard defending our right to, to, boycott, divest, and sanction, or speak up on the First Amendment. Isn't that the same thing? But then again, she signs a bill that opposes the global boycott, divest, and sanction movement targeting Israel, telling you she opposes it. She opposes 
she's saying in one breath, she's saying in one breath, see, this is, this is, this is even worse than the, the Iraq thing where you make a mistake, all right? You, you confess to the mistake and you, you, you're, you're not really, she hasn't, as I'd like to see her after this, at least say that her judgment was wrong. Here, she's not saying her judgment is wrong. She's doubling down on her bad judgment, telling you you're wrong because this bill, this anti-BDS legislation that the Congress signed clearly is, uh, is, is, infringes on constitutional rights of free speech, of free press, freedom to choose. That's what it does because it's saying that we oppose your right to boycott divest and sanction. Uh, so that, I mean, look, that's, that's what you get, right? That's what you get. Now, am I wrong? Am I wrong? Is Conti wrong? And, and, oh no, you're just attacking Tulsi Gabbard because, because you love Bernie. You're political, Conti. It's clouding your judgment. Oh fucking Conti, what happened to you? You're, you're you're missing out on the, the greatest opportunity of our time to support a candidate who's young and beautiful and she's anti-war. Right? She's anti-war, but judgment, my friends, that is the essence. That is the essence. Judgment. Is your judgment is your judgment what it should be to lead our great nation? I just gave you two examples of our judgment not being right. Now, again, I lean, I lean towards Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders has been 95% correct in judgment. In my judgment, he's been 95% correct in his judgment. Now, does he believe Russiagate? I, I don't know what's in Bernie's heart. I don't think he does. And I think that is an ongoing fib that tarnishes the good senator from Vermont's reputation. But it is, it is uh, it's something that you can't overlook at this time because of Bernie Sanders' 40 years of being right. And that's just a simple fact. And so, Tulsi Gabbard, I would like to hear you tell us why, if, if, the, if, if Iraq was, if Bush was lied to you, then come out and say it. Make a little video and say, I use poor judgment. I joined the the Iraqi the forces against the Iraqi people over a lie. My when my fellow when my fellow citizens were home boycotting and and protesting the Iraq invasion that Bush was saying on television. I I I was I I was wrong and I went off to war. Not only was I in support of Bush, but I was willing to go to war and fight and, and die and kill people over my bad judgment. Marcus Conti reporting. Jeez.